So there's a lot to talk about at Devil's Backbone. And I encourage everyone to come back and come on this Morrison Trail because there's a lot of interpretive signs reiterating some of the things that I've said and offering up some new information which I don't have time to talk about. This spot is interesting because to the uh, keen observer, you will see that it's a location of boulders and uh, gravels and sand. And there's a wide variety of rock types, including quartzite and some amphibolite and other granitic rocks. And they're the rocks that we typically see in Big Thompson Canyon or in river deposits down in Greeley along the Poudre River. And that should be very interesting because we're on a little bit of a hill here. And we have Route 34 just about 100 meters off to my right. And then another 50 meters or so is the Big Thompson River. And so looking at these sediments, we see that these deposits are typically well layered. And so having these nice round boulders in a deposit with good layering suggests a river deposit and not a glacier deposit. So we're a good 40 or 50 meters above the Big Thompson River. And so you have to ask yourself, how did the river deposit these sediments here? Well, we have to think about geologic time. These deposits are about 150,000 years old. And so 150,000 years ago, the river level was much higher. And so that's how the Big Thompson River was able to deposit these sediments here. And to add a bit more detail, the Big Thompson River was probably not much bigger back then than it is today, but it did carry a lot more sediment. And so most of the topography that you see around in the area was filled in with these river deposits that we're taking a look at here. This was a time period of glaciation. And in fact, this was a glacial period before much of the glacial features that we've seen up in Rocky Mountain National Park. If you remember, those are about 20,000 years old. These are about 150,000 years old. And so it also demonstrates that the earth has gone through multiple cycles of colder climate and warmer climate. And lots of people point to that, uh, that evidence that the earth has gone through warm periods and cold periods repeatedly as to suggest that the current warming period is just one of these cycles and not anything that humans can influence or create and it's nothing to worry about. And when you look at the rates of temperature change, you know, moving from glacial periods to warmer periods, it takes thousands of years to go through those cold and warm cycles. And if you look at the rate of change now, we're warming at a degree Celsius per hundred years, which is much higher than any natural process could create. And we've already tied that warming to human impacts, mainly fossil fuel burning, putting more CO2 in the atmosphere. And so that's what's concerning about the change in climate today, is that it's happening at a much faster rate than anything that's happened geologically in the past. So let's take a look at this on this graph here. And this is data from the Vostok Ice Core, which records global temperatures for, as shown here, the past 250,000 years and atmospheric CO2 concentrations as well. And what we can see is three main warm periods that we call interglacial periods, here, here, and here. And in between these interglacial periods are glacial periods. And we can see here at 150,000 years, there was a glacial period up in the high peaks area of the Rocky Mountains. And during that time, the Big Thompson Canyon carried significant amounts of sediment leading to the gravels, which were the focus of this video. And then 20,000 years ago, another glacial period where temperatures were cold and glaciers again occupied the high country in the Rocky Mountains. 
we can see that coming out of these glacial periods, the Earth warms significantly. And coming out of the 150,000 year glaciation, the Earth warmed at about a tenth of a degree Celsius per 100 years. And that's about the same rate of warming coming out of the glaciation about 20,000 years ago, about a tenth of a degree Celsius per 100 years. There's two other things to take a look at with this graph, one of which is we can see the close relationship between atmospheric CO2 and temperature. And further, to understand what's going on today with climate, we want to take a look at just the most recent 10,000 years, and we can see that climate has been very consistent for the past 10,000 years. So moving to this graph, we're looking at just the last 1,000 years. And we can see that for most of the past 1,000 years, the climate has been very consistent, just like we've seen for the past 10,000 years. And CO2 in the atmosphere has also largely unchanged. But in the late 1800s, we can see that CO2 has started to increase due to increased fossil fuel burning driving the Industrial Revolution. And then somewhere around 1920 or so, we can see temperatures are increasing globally in response to the increase in atmospheric CO2. And this warming, since about 1920, is on the order of 1 degree Celsius per 100 years or 10 times faster than anything we've seen in at least the last 250,000 years of the geologic record. And this is concerning because it's unclear whether the world's ecosystems can appropriately respond and stay healthy in such a rapidly changing global climate. And this has real implications for humans and society and whether we can continue to, to enjoy abundant water and food supply. Thank <laughs> you.